This is me up close, and you can see every little detail of me. There we go. Hey everyone, um, chilling in the shop right now, getting some kind of work done at least. Finishing up on this project I've been working on for the last year or so, and I say year or so because it was not a consistently built project. It was kind of on and off, but I filmed everything in the process of doing so. And what that is, is this right here. It's a, well, it's an RC robot platform. And I wanna go over with you what exactly I plan on doing with it. Um, you know, it's kind of an interesting little build here. So I'm not the first person to build a robot chassis. I'm also not the first person to have this idea of building a car or a vehicle that's controlled through the internet. Plenty of people on YouTube have done it prior to me and they've done a great job at it. But I wanted to do something different, at least exclusive to me, that's different. That is building a vehicle that can be controlled not only anywhere in the world, but it's capable of driving anywhere in the world. Pretty much an all-terrain vehicle that will have no issues getting over any of the rough, you know, rocks, gravel, to a point where it never gets stuck. And that was the whole idea behind this. I'm not saying it will never get stuck, but it's gonna have a hard time doing so. I'm gonna further explain um, the entire build process on how I started from just the chassis to uh, this point right now. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. I thought that would be like a cool little, you know, let's get into it. But um, no, let's just, let's just check it out, yeah. So I have quite a history with this chassis. I had it for about seven years now. 2017, March is when I first got it. So yeah, we're encroaching the seven year mark of owning this thing. And I had a lot of projects with it. The one biggest project being a Nerf turret robot which um, fires nerf darts at enemies, which was a lot of fun building. But since then, it's been sitting collecting dust for the last six years, waiting for a new project to be embarked upon, which is what we're doing right now. But before we get to that, I wanted to install a bunch of motors. Six motors actually are on this vehicle, and you can see them in each corner right here. And the reason why I wanted six motors is because I wanted as much power and torque as possible to muster up the strength to get over tall grass, rocky hills, or sandy deserts so I don't ever get stuck. And that's really the whole goal, something to be all-terrain that also can be controlled anywhere and spy on people if I want to spy on people, which is kind of creepy, but that's besides the point. Anyway, let's get into the motor installation. Okay, so here's the robot platform. Um, I have six motors on it, and I basically want to go over how I plan to wire all six of these motors into this one motor controller. So it's going to be a six by six drive system, six motors driving six wheels from this one motor controller. So let's get into how I plan to solder everything together. So right over here, I have my soldering iron heating up. Um, it's going to get to 480 degrees before we're ready to use it. Here's the solder I'm using. It's rosin core and it has lead in it. So be sure that you're in a well ventilated area or have a fume extractor. So we have the terminal right here. And what we're going to have to do is basically connect our wire to that terminal. So first things first, I have a piece of wire right over here. Uh, I'm going to have to strip the ends of it. So here's the wires I'm working with right now. So I'm just going to separate them. I got a pretty long length of them just because it'll make things easier. You can reduce your wiring, but you could never increase your wiring. You're gonna have to re-solder it. We're gonna just go ahead, insert it, hold it down, and it pulls right apart, stripped, like so. As you can see, the copper end, same goes for the red wire. We got the copper end. That's what we're gonna solder on uh, to make our connection. Okay, so I got the end of the wire twisted right here, and we're gonna insert it straight through that hole. See, and it goes through it perfectly. 
Then we're gonna just bend it off a little bit so it stays in place, kind of like a hook. And get my soldering iron out here. And we're gonna go ahead and go to town on this. Make sure it goes on the ends. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Just make sure it spreads on there nicely. And melt that over. Pretty much this is how it goes. It's not a perfect joint. I'm not like the best at soldering or anything, but you know what? It will get the job done and we're gonna test it to make sure it works. So I'm gonna do the same thing now for the black one. All right, so I have all three of these motors wired up and it's connected to a splitter. This is an XT60 three-way splitter. This allows me to use one power source to power all three of these motors at once. And I'm gonna do the same thing for these other three motors in this row right here. That way, we're gonna have a six by six drive system. But for now, I want you to pay attention to these three motors because they're all gonna turn at the same time once I connect it to this uh, 7.4 volt battery right here. And that's gonna be the power source. So I have the connectors and we're gonna go ahead and connect the leads over to this battery right now. Here we go. Perfect. Now we see all three of these motors are turning in unison in the same direction. That's pretty much how the whole drive system is going to work. And it's all connected to this one uh, power source right here, the 7.4 volt battery, which connects over to the splitter, which then controls all the motors in unison. Just like that. Oh, hey there, future me here. I'm not really liking this background, so let's just change that real quick. Much better, this kind of fits the theme, I think, hopefully. Um, anyway, I wanna do a quick recap on what exactly has happened since I last worked on this build because I've made quite a lot of progress in terms of being productive and I wanna share with you what exactly has happened. Okay, so for a power source, I'm using two 8,000 milliamp 3S LiPo batteries and I connected these in parallel for a total of 16,000 milliamp hours or 16 amps. I'm using 16 amps of battery capacity, which is quite a lot because I want to maximize my vehicle's runtime in between charges. The more milliamps, the more battery life I have, and I want to have as much battery life as possible because it would really suck if I'm driving the vehicle, for example, 10 miles away and the battery just dies out on me due to poor battery life. It's gonna be a real hassle. I'd rather not have that happen. I connected these batteries in parallel to double the capacity but keep the same peak voltage, which is around 12 volts. I would not want to exceed 12 volts, which is why I'm not going to run these in series, which would be about 24 volts, and these motors max out at 12 volts, which would be bad if I went more than that because I could actually fry the motors, which we do not want. So 12 volts of battery power is plenty. Since these are lithium batteries, it's important that I have them securely mounted to the chassis. I wouldn't want them sliding or shifting around and possibly getting punctured, which if you're familiar with lithium batteries, a puncture does not end very well. It could result in fire, an explosion, and that could destroy the vehicle and anything around it, which is something I want to avoid. In order to avoid any of this from happening, I use an RC battery tray, something you'd find in like an RC car, and some metal standoffs and screwed the metal standoffs to the tray and bolted that to the chassis. I then went and used Velcro straps to secure the battery to the tray. This mounting solution turned out to be very solid and I don't see the batteries coming loose anytime soon. Now that I have all the electronics sorted out, something is missing and this vehicle would be completely useless without it and that is wheels. We need wheels or else I'm not going anywhere. Mounting these wheels to the chassis is relatively simple. All we have to do is bolt it down to the hub carriers right here. And obviously there's six of them because there's six motors and we have six wheels. And I'll be doing so using these socket heads, 832 by half inch screws. Okay, first wheel is up. Everything's looking pretty good so far, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it down some more. Just so we know everything is torqued down and these wheels will not be coming loose anytime soon. All right, so everything is complete with uh, mounting the wheels. We can get a good look at it right here. I really do 
dig the ground clearance they get off of using these uh, monster truck wheels with them being so plush and filled with air. And that will really compensate, I'm hoping, for the lack of suspension this vehicle has. But there's only one thing left to do just to see how it performs and that is to test it. So with all the electronics connected up and the wheels mounted, it's pretty simple moving forward in terms of testing if everything works. Basically what I'm going to do is connect the receiver to the motor controller. Connecting the receiver is pretty simple. We have these pin headers coming out of the motor controller, which allows me to connect a cable to the header, which I can then connect to the receiver. And then after that, it's pretty much pairing the receiver to the transmitter. In this case, I'm using a FlySky radio system. I just had it lying around and it's gonna get the job done. So we're gonna be able to see if everything works the way I intend it to. Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my radio and we're gonna connect the batteries to the motor controller. Perfect. Take a second. Now, when I press the throttle, see the wheels turn. Now, with everything complete, I think all that's left to do is for uh, a test drive. So that pretty much concludes the entire chassis build for the robot. Now we have of course the electronics installed, the motor controller, the motors, the wheels, everything is complete. But of course, I don't have unlimited range yet and you might be asking how am I going to do that? How am I going to be able to drive this vehicle anywhere in the world? Because currently I'm using a 2.4 GHz radio system and that gives me about half a mile's range so I'm not that far. Well in order to solve that, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi. Now you might be asking, how does a Raspberry Pi give me unlimited range? And the answer is simply, I'm going to control the robot through the internet. And we're going to do that by using 4G connectivity. So I'm going to have this uh, 4G hotspot connected to the Raspberry Pi, which is then going to be connected to the motor controller. And then from there, I'll install a software on the Pi that allows me to rem remote access it from a computer, desktop, wherever and then I could actually control it from many miles away, hopefully anywhere in the world, kind of like accessing a chat room or accessing a video, video feed from you know, somewhere else. You, you'll be able to do it by just basically using a um, URL link or a uh, IP address, something like that. So all of this is a lot easier said than done. Um, the concepts are all present, but <laughs> the big question is how am I gonna design the software? Because it's, it's working in cohesion with the hardware, of course, and I have a few ideas in mind, but um, as for now, I, I have to still work things out. So, after doing some research, I found out how to connect the Raspberry Pi to the motor controller. Using jumper wires, the Pi can connect from its GPIO pins to the controller's pin headers. And then using a program that'll have the code, the Pi and the controller will be able to communicate with each other. Controlling the motor controller with the Pi means that I can use a USB device like a keyboard or even a game controller that can send inputs to tell the vehicle where to go. But before I get ahead of myself, it is important that I figure out how to have a strong internet connection wherever I drive the vehicle. As I previously mentioned, I'll use a Wi-Fi hotspot to provide a constant internet connection. This one from Solus uses a 4G data plan that offers an unlimited subscription. Not to mention, its internet can be used in over 135 different countries. So basically, the Pi will be connected wirelessly to the hotspot and then connected to the motor controller. 
Once everything is set up, I can remotely access the Pi from my home computer, which will allow me to drive the vehicle and since I'm technically controlling it through the internet, in theory I should be able to have unlimited range as long as the hotspot is providing a constant internet connection. In order to see where the vehicle is going, I plan on connecting a webcam to the Pi, which will then stream a live video feed back to the home computer as I drive in real time. As for the home computer that I'll be controlling everything from, I decided to use my laptop just for the sake of portability. So this pretty much wraps up the entire chassis build portion of this vehicle. We installed all six motors along with the motor controller and because of this we have a really efficient running vehicle. This thing can get over any rough terrain I throw at it, especially with these nice big tires uh, that are filled with air. So it does compensate for the lack of suspension this chassis has. But we are far from complete when it comes to finishing the entirety of this build. Because again, we want this thing to be controlled anywhere in the world. And the only way we're gonna do that is through an internet connection, which will be done by connecting a Raspberry Pi to the motor controller. As long as we're connected to the internet, I will be able to be across from the other side of the globe controlling this vehicle somewhere in some remote location. That's the whole goal at least. And of course, we're gonna to have to have a camera mounted to this thing as well, which we're gonna to have to figure out because we need a live stream video coming back to the home, the home base to where we can see where the vehicle is at. But there's no way of knowing if it will all work until we actually start working on that because there's a lot of coding involved with connecting the Raspberry Pi to the motor controller, which we're gonna explore all of this in episode two. So there's a lot to look forward to when it comes to completing this build. But I really hope you enjoyed um, episode one, I guess, of just exploring everything.